All right, well, let's pray. Lord, we just come before you and we thank you so much for those gathered here and the words that you've given me. So I just pray strength and wisdom to deliver them in the way that you need those of us to hear and to let it be written on our hearts, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So this all started, I've, I've had some, some different avenues that I can go, go down uh, for different sermon topics that, that have just really, really been intriguing me. But this one overrode it because uh, I almost took it as a challenge, so to speak. So last week, uh, we, we, have, we had the exhortation, and so I, we talked about exhortation, and then after we finished recording, we did exhortation ministry. And so we had all the older people, the older generation, talk to the younger one, and then the younger one, which unfortunately for her, she was the only one, so she had to exhort six other, seven other adults. And she did an excellent, excellent job and, and really hit that nail on the head, I, I, I believe, with a bunch of us. But her word to me was there is more to peace than just forgiveness. And so I have... And so she was thinking about a, a, the, the, the demonic oppression thing and saying there's more to the peace than just forgiving that time. And, I, and, I, and so I start, I've, since then I've, I've thought on it and chewed on it and go, well, okay. I mean, forgiveness, the, I seek forgiveness the most because I want to be, uh, have a clean slate before the Lord. I don't want anything held against me. It's also a, a tool that the enemy can use to just tweak me and, and get me off course. And so for me, finding that peace, you know, because if somebody wrongs me or I wrong somebody, you know, it just eats us alive and, and it gets us angry, it gets us frustrated and just can, can blow up into this huge thing that really it wasn't. You know, I don't know how many times in my life I have said something and it has eaten me alive and I have blown it up into this almost anxiety idol in my life and then I've, I've been like, ah, I can't take it anymore. Let me just go apologize to this person and be like, I'm sorry, I was a complete and utter idiot. And they're like, what? I don't even remember that. What are you do? What are you talking about? I knew you were joking. And I'm like, well, just forgive me. And they're like, okay, we forgive you. And then it's like, oh, great. So now that peace has come. So that's when, so I always seek forgiveness in ministry first. It's always forgiveness, extending forgiveness and, and repenting. And so she said, there's more to peace she said there's more to peace than just forgiveness. And so I said, okay, well, what does that mean? You know, what more is there to peace? And so when you take a step back and you go, okay, what do I, what do, when I think of peace, what does that mean to me? And, and in, my, in, in my current situation with my life, and my kids, and the, and the church, and everything, I, I think of peace as like financial stability. I find peace when I am financially stable. So if I only have enough money, I will have peace from the stress of bills and that sort of stuff. Uh, I will have peace when I'm rid of all those toxic relationships. I will find peace in my life when all those toxic people are out of my life. I will have peace, I will experience peace, I will soak up peace when I get to a quiet place, when I'm surrounded by quiet. You know, I, I can't find peace during the work, so I can't find peace in my work environment, I can't find peace at home, so I have to go out and find peace in a solitude environment. Or there's just the, there's no fighting. No fighting in the house. Mom and dad are happy. Mom and dad are at peace with each other, you know, cordial with each other. There's no war. There's no rumors. All these fighting, you know, nobody on, in my sphere of influence and circle is yelling on Facebook or social media and like all that. That's what peace is. It's like, so all that stuff, when that falls into place, then I will have true and utter peace. And it's funny because that will never happen. 
I know that never happens because I've seen it time and time again in my life. If, if I at least find quiet, you know, solitude in the woods, there's anxiety and, and unrest because I'm getting a text because somebody, something happened to somebody, somebody's arguing, you know, whatever it is. There's always something, or oh, a bill came in unexpected. You know, you're out in the quiet solitude, enjoying the peace there, and you're like, I'm being filled. And then you break an ankle, and now all of a sudden you got doctor's bills and stuff. So there's the stupid things that just destroy peace. This world, this life, my life, everything in it just wants to destroy my peace. And so I said, okay, okay, fine. I understand this. This is what peace is. Is it going to happen? Can I find it? And so I, so I was like, well, as a pastor, the proper thing to do is to seek peace in the Bible. What does the Bible say about peace? And so when, when you look at it, the, the word for peace most used in there is Irene, E-I-R-E-N-E. And then in Hebrew, uh, the, the words like shalom, shalom. And that's even a greeting in Hebrew to each other, shalom, which is peace, peace to you. You know, uh, salam is the same in, in Arabic. Salam aleikum, it's salam is peace. And so these are all wishing peace. But the, the deepest meaning of that word, when you say peace, isn't necessarily peace in financial stability or peace with no fighting or anything like that. It is, the peace is to be complete. It means to be complete, to be whole, to be sound. And so the Bible uses these, th there's three types of peace in the Bible. There's peace in surroundings. So no war you know, no, no fighting. Uh, the Lord gave Israel peace on all sides. Okay, there's peace with others. So obviously that's easy, easy with relationships. There's no fighting. Family's getting along great. Must be Christmas sometimes, you know. Wh whatever it is, or in all reality, it's probably not Christmas. It's probably you're all out in public. <laughs> Family's out in public, so everybody's getting along just fine. And then the last one is peace through harmony with God. So being in line with God's will and finding the peace in that. And so I say, okay, I can understand those three, those three types of peace. You know, and we just kind of went over it. Peace in the surroundings, peace with others, and peace through harmony with God. And all of that is what we seek because that's like, Sounds like such a nice life. <laughs> Sounds like such a nice life and a break from everything. And so that begged the question. The peace in surroundings, the peace with others, the peace through harmony with God. Where does peace come from? Where does peace come from? And the answer is... It comes from the Trinity. It comes from God. Because if you look at, go to Isaiah 9.6. Isaiah 9.6 says this, and, and this is a fairly popular known one. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. If you turn to Philippians 4.9... says this. I'll read verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue 
And if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things you have, which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Prince of peace, God of peace. You know, and you say, well, it says later in the, earlier in the Bible that he's, he's a warring God. And how can a God be of peace when he's telling, you know, he's telling you to murder and create and genocide peoples? So how can a God who says he's a prince of peace, he's the, the God of peace, peace is integral to who they are. It's integral. And for those that just want to not find the Prince of Peace and the God of Peace, they're going to read the Bible in a completely different way. But if you look at the reasons and the actions of what he's done, it demonstrates continuous peace. But this is the important one. Galatians 5.22 says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. It is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So if it is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, it is a fruit of being a part of God. God indwells us. It is a result of being in the presence of God. So it's not something we can manifest outside. We cannot manifest the true, complete wholeness of peace outside of the Holy Spirit, outside of God. The true, absolute meaning of peace. Not just, oh, this is a respite. Oh, this is a time of rest. No, true, whole, full, complete peace is unattainable outside of him who is the definition of peace. You can't find it outside of him. And so I was reading a website and came across this, this website and and it was really interesting, and it says this. It says, peace is not a hallowed feeling that comes over us in church, but is the supernatural fruit of a heart set deep in God and his trustworthy word. And so peace is the conscious possession of adequate resources for God's name is I am. Peace rules your day when Christ and his word rules your mind. And this was so profound, yet so easy. It says, peace rules your day when Christ and his word rules your mind because peace comes not from the absence of trouble, but from the presence of God. Not the absence of trouble, not the absence of issues, but from the presence of God, which is an amazing thing if you think about it, because peace never goes away. If you are in the presence of God, peace will never go away. Our mental peace goes away as soon as an issue comes up. As soon as, you know, my children say, Dad, I clogged the toilet. My peace goes away and I'm immediately annoyed. Like, really? Again? What did you stick down the toilet this time? So peace in that sense of, of tr an absence of trouble goes away as soon as trouble comes. But if you seek peace from the originator of peace, by being in his presence, peace will never go away. The complete wholeness. You know, there's so many verses. You know, 
Peace I give to you. Peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives, but peace. He gives you peace. You know, and, and if you, like, what I found interesting is when you look at Saul, of all the characters in the Bible, right, you go, who had the most opportunity of peace? And I would my first thought is immediately Solomon. That man had peace in his kingdom from his enemies. The man had no financial problems whatsoever. He had everything he could ever have. Yet that man was not called a man of peace. He was called a man of rest. But he was not called a man of peace because he still had issues. He still had trials and struggles. Yet if you look at Jesus, a man of constant sorrow... That man had peace. Nothing flustered that man. He was never caught unawares because he was constantly in the presence of God. A complete peace comes not from a it comes from a life spent close to God, not from an absence of trouble. And so when you look at your life now, when you look at the potentials of struggles and trials coming in the future, ooh, new job, you know, job's difficult. I got bills coming out. All these things, they can destroy your peace now. But when the importance is staying in the presence of God, and when you are staying in the presence, that brings peace not only to your present, it brings peace when you look for his presence to your past. My dad died. Where are you, God? Look for the presence and you can find peace. You know, other people, you know, I was abused. Look for the presence of God and you will find the peace to be able to deal with all that. Instead of hiding things and smothering things and just sticking them away in the dark, dark corner, that's not what God wants. He doesn't want a temporary respite from, from your trials. He wants full, complete, whole peace in your life. And so by putting the presence, seeking the presence in your past, issues, whether you're an alcoholic, whether you were, you know, promiscuous, whatever the heck it is, even if you had a darn good life, if you go to the past, you can ha find all the issues you have in the past. But if you are looking for the presence that solves it and brings the peace that you need, that helps bring peace into the presence, the present, and then you bring, find the presence, and as you maintain that presence, it travels with you into the future, bringing the peace that you so desperately want. It's everything we're seeking for. We search for new friends because we want peace. We search for better jobs because we want peace. We search to buy things and get better things because we think that will bring peace into my life. If I get an expensive car, I won't have to deal with bills. Uh, it'll be more reliable. The fact is, is it's gonna break or it's gonna get dinged. And all of a sudden your peace, that thing that you found is gone. There's no more peace. Everything in this world is a temporary peace. The only thing that has remained permanent, that has never changed, is that God is there. The presence of God is able to be attained and maintained, which means peace, which is who they are. It is integral to who they are. Is attainable and maintainable forever. And so peace 
in times of trouble is still attainable, is still maintainable, that nothing shall be shaken. That's what is said. You know, that's what he's saying. Don't be anxious of nothing. Because if you are in the present, if you are focusing on the presence in the present, there will be trials, there will be struggles, and that will take up mental headspace. But the peace from that presence won't go away because it can't be dispelled by anything of this earth. It is the faithfulness of God that maintains that peace in our life. Not any of my faithfulness, because that's as fleeting as the hour. But God's faithfulness and promises say, I got you. Your peace is here. It will stay here. Just come find me. So seek the presence of of God, not the absence of trouble. And this is a thing that I want you to understand and, and listen and hear. 2 Thessalonians 3.16. This is the closing of 2 Thessalonians, this closing of the epistle from Paul, and this is a benediction, but this is one of the, one, it's a very, very profound couple sentences. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. The Lord of peace. That's who he is. He is the Lord of peace. Himself give you peace always. Not sometimes always and in every way every way you want peace in your finances seek the presence of God you want peace in your relationships seek the presence of God you want peace in your environment seek the presence of God seek the presence of God not to make those problems absent, and you will find the peace that your heart is crying for, that your spirit is crying for, that your body and mind are crying out for. You will find that peace, and it will be able to be maintained as long as you stay in the presence of God. So that's the challenge. Keep seeking the presence of God. And it's not that your problems won't disappear because that's not what true peace is. It's not what true peace is. A complete and whole peace, body, mind, and soul, is only found in that where it originates from. And that is from God Himself not from things, not from people, not from money, wealth, prestige, nothing. Because it's all fleeting. It comes from the Prince of Peace, it comes from the Lord of Peace, and it comes from bearing fruit from the Holy Spirit. So you want peace? Seek it out but seek it in the right place. Seek it from the presence of that who is called peace. From God, from Christ, from the Holy Spirit. It flows from all three of them. So seek them and find it. Lord, I thank you for your word and I thank you for your truth and just opening our eyes. And so I love you so much for just spending this time with me and for really opening my eyes that I, I don't need to seek anything other than, I don't need to seek multiple things. I just need to seek you. And from you, it is an outpouring and it is a whole peace 
not just a portion and not just a decaying, fleeting part, but whole, complete, a sound and solid piece that I can hold on to. All glory is yours. In Jesus' name, amen.